Welcome to Picks with the Professor, the show where a real statistics professor gives you sports betting tips. I'm your host, Professor Sides. For the latest updates, information, and picks, you can follow me on Twitter at Professor Sides. This Major League Baseball episode covers every game scheduled to be played on Friday, September 9th, 2022. In case you're new here, I built a mathematical model for win probability using hitter and pitcher projections that I've created. I also have total projections based on those things and weather data. And I'll make one money line or run line pick on every game played seven days a week that there are no Sunday shows. That doesn't mean that I recommend you do the same as my goal in this episode is to share key information about today's games, give you a few things to think on, and explain why certain plays are being recommended in order for you to come up with picks you are comfortable with. I never recommend blindly tailing or fading any pick, but rather to hear the justifications and thought processes to make sure you're fully on board with me or against me before investing your hard-earned money. And as I go through my plays, remember that there are no locks in gambling. So what I'll give you are loves, likes, and leans indicate my confidence level with respect to scaling wagers. And as always, please remember that good and bad variants will occur. So as much as I'd like to say will be profitable each and every day, that is an impossible reality for any gambler. <clears throat> A wild couple of days here. I tweeted about this. Um, uh, let's see, what was it? Wednesday. Afternoon looked great, and the night just went uh, late afternoon and evening just horribly wrong. Started off Thursday horribly wrong as well, um, and then and then Thursday night here looking a lot better. So uh, it's been a weird roller coaster, and it, and it goes back to a lot of one run games uh, or a lot of two run games where the favorites win by two. So it's like it's it's run line question marks there. So. Uh, I think it's just been kind of a, a crazy couple of days and, and, and it hasn't gone as well. We're still in the negative for the week. So uh, still some work to do this weekend to get another positive week. We have four of the last five weeks have been positive. So um, still some work to do for us. I think we can, though. We're barely in the negative this week. Um, but it is, as as I mentioned, uh, you know, I don't I mean, if you want to just play exactly what I mean, you can. And that record's out in the sheets. You can see it's also on bet stamp, uh, you know, third party verified. But uh I know a lot of y'all don't do that, and that's that's what I'm hoping for. I, I, I'm I'm just hoping to be a tool in your arsenal um, to hear some things, to think on some things, to see a different opinion. I, honestly, and, and and I feel like I, maybe I haven't done a great job of saying this, but my thoughts on the B and the C grade picks, and I know the A picks have been on fire, and a lot of y'all love the A picks, and I I've, I've been really pleased with them as well. But the, there's a lot of good B and C picks as well, and there's a lot that aren't. And my hope for those is that you know you're kind of hearing those, and if you're already thinking that way, maybe it gives you a little bit more confidence in your liking it, or it maybe gives you something to think on to go a different direction, you know, and and, and to hear that, and not just to write those off, but to kind of say, yeah, if I hear another person that I that I trust kind of saying something similar, or I'm kind of thinking different ways, you know, just kind of utilize that information, but just understand I just feel a little bit less good about the value at that number and that's the key that's why i post the numbers that the model gives and what the sheet has because the price matters i talk about that a lot and that's one of the big educational things i'm trying to get across and a lot of y'all are like yo you're preaching to the choir right but you know just that price matters if it moves 10 cents 20 cents some of these lines overnight and the next day you know moving 30 cents injuries aside if it's an injury it's a whole different story but otherwise, these lines moving and it and it kind of flips what i'd recommend and it might flip up the other side and some of you I don't want to go off the rails here. We're three minutes in, right? Some of you are like, how can that change? Well, let's think about this. If I have a, a number that the model says should be minus 150, that's a 60% win probability. And my hope is that the model's accurate. That's what I'm trying to do. And that's the biggest thing that's important is that the model has is, is accurate that those 60% winners win 60% of the time. And what that means is that in the in the morning, if you could lay minus 140 with the favorite, that's what I would do. But in the evening, if it's plus 160 with the dog, that's what I would do. And you say, how could you be on both sides and say that makes sense? Well, because if it wins 60% of the time, one game, you're going to win or lose. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about in the long run here. And if this game plays out 100 times and the model is accurate, that's 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 what I'm striving for. And and the favorite wins 60 times and the dog wins 40. 40 of those 100 at plus 160 is going to be pro that you're going to be profitable. And if you had the favorite and those 60 wins at minus 140, that's going to be profitable. And so... Price really matters, and that's why I post all that. And so depending on how the number moves, you may be at something different. Maybe the number's completely gone. And something that I love, you look at it, you say, man, that price is horrible. Stay off of it if you think the price is horrible. You know, So uh, there's, there's, there's total projections. There's a lot of good information here that I'm trying to provide. And I'll stop rambling, but the key point is uh, hopefully you're getting some good things here. And just I want you to be thinking. That's my, my, my main goal. Be thinking about all the things happening, uh, the the movements, the totals, the sides, everything that's going on, and and hopefully it's it's giving you some good information. And the official picks obviously matter a little. 
little bit, maybe not a ton, because if I show a profit or not, it doesn't really matter. What matters is if you are, because if I shop around and find all the best prices and show a great profit, but you can't profit, I'm not actually helping you. So the biggest thing is that you're profit and hopefully you are. My official picks, I got some work to do, but I'm hoping we can get it back to a profitable week to make five out of six. It'd be a lot of fun for me personally. Uh, and that's what we'll try to attempt to do here for this Friday is get us back to that goal. But before we get to Friday's game, some reminders, please hit that like button if you're on YouTube. Also, if you aren't yet, please consider subscribing or following. It's free. And the only way is something you turn notifications on to ensure you don't miss any of the college basketball, MLB, or college football content that this channel provides. College football, couple games here tonight on Friday and a ton on Saturday. Got a ton of content. Uh, Cousin Jared and I had a ton of fun with these episodes and a lot of good talk. And, and when Jake came on, that episode got really long. And there's timestamps in there, but there was a lot of really good concepts and talk about how much we should wait games uh, early in the season. Just a lot of really good things to think on and a lot of really good discussion. So if, you're, if you bet college football, a lot of good content there. You got a lot of time here still to check that out uh, before most of the games get going on Saturday. Got a lot for you here. If you like what you're seeing, share with a friend. Uh, hit me up on Twitter. Drop a comment from YouTube. I love those and try to respond to as many as I can. Uh, a reminder, we've also partnered with Horse Racing Today. If you if you bet horses, uh, you can find their stuff at horseracingtoday.net. They've got a team of five with over 125 years of combined experience in handicapping horse races. There's an angle they don't know or bias they can't identify. They've got YouTube shows or the website. You can check out those links are in the description. And one last reminder before we get to the games, we started up that Patreon page for those of you looking to support the show. Membership starts at just $3 per month. We've got a Discord where we talk about a lot of uh, opening numbers, different plays that we may or may not like that we don't get a chance to talk about on the show. We have a, a, a channel in there for other sports that we don't even cover, uh, explicitly having shows on, but just what people are thinking about those things. Got a lot of fun sports talk. Uh, you can also sign up for ad-free shows, early access to the shows. We've got the shows being recorded at night now. So if you're on the West Coast, if you're a night owl, when you subscribe, you're getting these shows here uh, at night rather than the next morning. Um, you got a lot of a lot of good options here uh, on that Patreon page. We're gonna go check that out. Uh, all that information again in the show's description and always on the website www.pixwiththeprofessor.com. All right, all that out of the way. Uh, full slate of games here for us this Friday. Got a late afternoon start, 4:05 p.m. Eastern, with the Giants and the Cubs. Uh, Cubs, man, really breaking my heart here on a Thursday afternoon. The A grade play of the day and. Um, twice had a lead late had a lead in the ninth had had two losses on thursday in like seven games with the home team favored and winning in the ninth inning i don't know how that's even possible that seems like one seems hard enough but to do it twice in a short slate freaking cubs man and, and, and it, it, it's exactly what i talk about with this cubs team right their bullpen is terrible and it's just you gotta hope you get up by enough to hold on for dear life i much like playing the cubs as a dog especially on the run line because they tend to get up and when things like this happen sometimes they win and sometimes they don't but when they don't they tend to lose by one and so the cubs as a run line underdog i feel like is a solid play Here's the issue. I'm recording this the night before, so we'll get out to you early in the morning. Uh, again, if you want it that night before, you can set up on, on Patreon. But if, if not, so it's your early morning, and, and you probably aren't going to have a run line option yet. A lot of times they wait on the run line at Wrigley because the wind being such a factor. That wind affects the total. The total affects the, the run line. So right now we can't play the run line. Um, so that's kind of the unfortunate thing. That's kind of the way I feel like it's much more fun to look with the Cubs. As favorites like they were against the Reds, you don't have that option, or if you play the alternate run line, it's it's crazy minus odds. So we weren't able to do that. But uh, at bullpen costs us. They're playing the Giants that also have a bad bullpen and uh, had to use up a bunch of their relievers here in the doubleheader um, in Milwaukee that they just got through playing kind of on their way across here to Chicago. The benefit for them, and I, and I tweeted about this, I mean, hats off to Jacob Junis going six innings and saving a lot of the bullpen in game one, but they still use a lot of guys in game two. I think the Cubs are the side to be on here just because of the crazy doubleheader extra travel for the Giants and the wear on their bullpen. It's just I can't be that confident in this Cubs team, especially in the money line because I have to have them hold the lead. Again, thankfully, the Giants' bullpen is bad too. I, I think a run line, though, might be the way to look on this, especially if the odds aren't too carried away, especially considering that the Giants will have a starting pitcher edge in this one with Carlos Rodon against Drew Smiley. A pair of lefties, obviously, Rodon is fantastic. He's He's – in that third tier of starting pitcher, uh, in that you know that Shane Bieber, Dylan Cease tier, you know, not quite in the Max Scherzer, Justin Verlander, Otani, McClanahan, you know that tier. But he, he, I feel like he's 
trying to sneak into that second tier. You know, he's probably the top of that third tier. Fantastic pitcher, 292 ERA in the season. Underline metrics say um, even even better. He's actually been better than that. Uh, so, I mean, a, a great pitcher there. A smiley, a 384 ERA. Underline metrics, though, say it should be more than the mid four. So, I mean, a massive starting pitcher is here for the Giants. The model has Radon almost two standard deviations better than Smiley. So, I mean, that's that's their big edge. Offensively, as mediocre as the Cubs' offense is, it's a little right-handed heavy, which gives them a boost against lefties. And the Giants are extremely left-handed heavy, gives them a ding against lefties. And lefty versus lefty, I actually rate the Cubs' offense as better than the Giants in this game. So that's kind of a sneaky point here that I want to make. Obviously, both sets of relievers are mostly terrible in the morning when the run line comes out, like I said, that might be the way to look on this one. Uh, right now, the model says the total should be about 8.3. It's going to be fairly, it's projected to be fairly warm, low 80s. Right now, the wind would be blowing out or across to left field. And that's the thing we got, we got to figure out in the morning. Is it more out or more across in the five to 10 mile an hour range? So, I mean, if you got 10 mile an hour winds that really blowing out, that's going to bump that total up. Wrigley's really sensitive to the wind and the model knows that. So it's going to really account for that. Again, right now it's across slash out. So it's kind of, the model's kind of like nudging the total up a little bit, but not too much. Cause 8.3 is a pretty high total given Radon as good as he is smiley's average and giving both offenses are below average. 8.3 is a pretty high total here. So a little warmer day wind may be blowing out again. If it, I mean, this total I could easily see being more like nine, if it actually shifts to, to, to straight out at, at, at the, five to 10 mile an hour mark. So that'll of course affect the run line as well too. If the wind's blowing out more, I might just take my chances on the on the money line. If it shifts to more across and that total is more in the eight range, then the run line looks even more appealing. You might have to pay a little bit more of a premium for it, but I think it would be worth it because a lower scoring game means it's more likely that the Cubs, uh, if they lose, lose by only one. So a lot of things to consider in this one for your late afternoon game. It's a standalone game, at least for the first uh, you know seven-ish innings, um, if you're looking to get some money on this one. With regards to the money line, the model says Giants minus 132. So Giant, uh, Cubs plus 134 offers a little bit of value. It's just not enough to get really excited about given how bad the Cubs bullpen is. So again, uh, a, a decent bit of value. I think the Cubs are worth a look. It's just a question of what price can you get and if you're going money line or run line. But I do think the Cubs are worth a little look, just maybe not the most my most favorite play of the day. 635 Eastern, first pitch, Cardinals the Pirates. Cardinals, uh, disappointing again. Uh, Cardinals are a frustrating team for me. I, I feel like the model didn't like the Cardinals and said, ah, it's smoke and mirrors, they're not this good, and kept fading them, they kept winning. And then now the model's like, okay, fine, Cardinals, I'll, I'll believe in you. And then now they can't beat the nationals. Of course, the nationals also may be like now the greatest team in baseball. So that's a whole other weird issue that is confusing me personally, but the Cardinals here try to get things right. Playing the pirates, obviously playing the pirates is a way to get things right. The issue for them is that they'll face a decent pitcher. The pirates have some decent starters here. Uh, Renzi Contreras, I've talked about a lot that I, I like this kid, uh, 341 ERA underlying metrics say it's not that good, but, a, but an average pitcher. And again, a young guy, one that, if he's already average and young, you know he has the potential to increase that and, and get better, and he should get better the rest of the season. In theory, make a jump in the off season and and become a solid pitcher. But he's already decent enough. Uh, the Cardinals though, Miles Michaelis, who I, I said all here when he had that great start that it wasn't that good. His ERA's ballooned up now to three thirty two, where it was in the twos for most of the season. The underlying metrics still say it should be higher than that, but it's but but at least upper threes. Uh, Michael is decent, a good pitcher, above average pitcher. Uh, Contreras at this point, again, just average. So Cardinals have the edge there. They obviously have better relievers than the Pirates. They obviously have better offense than the Pirates. On the road, they should be favored. Questions just by how much. Model says it should be Cardinals minus 199. So I'll take the Cardinals at one, minus 195. I think the Cardinals are worth a look on the money line as long as the number starts with a one. It's just, it's like the Cubs. It's one that I do think is worth adding to your portfolio. And I want to make sure I, I make this clear. If you're listening to this, I mean, you may have just seen C-Pick on the Cardinals been like, I don't care what he says, right? I hope that's not the case. But I think that diversifying our portfolio makes a lot of sense, especially if you're shopping at a book with dime lines where there's not a lot of juice, or if you're shopping around and you can kind of have a similar effect to things that I absolutely recommend. Diversifying your portfolio and really scaling your wagers up and down, I think can make a lot of sense because it prevents you from having being quite as susceptible to good and bad runs. And, and I and I hope what I'm illustrating by playing every single game and you're seeing still some of the up and down roller coasters, that's with all those games. If you're playing fewer games, those roller coasters can get even steeper, even longer ups and downs. And the ups are fun, but the downs suck, right? So 
I think the Cardinals are worth adding to your portfolio just at a smaller play. You know, minus 185, I do think it's worth an investment. It's just not a big one. Um, you could also look run line. I, I don't know with this Cardinals team. My, my fear with the run line, this Contreras is decent enough to keep this game close. And with what we see from the Cardinals lately, I, I don't know. One angle is, you know, they've struggled. And if they lose, you don't want to be paying the bigger price. And, and I get that. But another angle is they won one of the games that they struggled in by one run. And if it's if Contreras does keep them in the ball game, the Cardinals still are the better team, might, might win by one. So I, I don't know. It's a coin toss between the two. I think the Cardinals are worth adding to your portfolio as long as the price stays similar. Now, if the price balloons out money line to, to 210, I'll, I, I just stay away from it at that point. But uh, in, in the 100s, I think it's worth an investment, just a smaller one. Again, I'm going to go C grade, but um, it's it's both this one and the Cubs are both C plus grades. It's just, I don't really want that full extra amount on them, uh, but they're, but they're not that far from B grade plays. There's both a little bit of value on both of them. Again, I think they're worth looks. They're not C grade plays that I'm making just to fill out the card. Um, model on this one says total of 7.8. Uh, it'll be around 80 degrees for the most of this game. Winds blowing in from left center at around five miles an hour. Actual total is eight. So model says stay away from the total on this one. 640 Eastern Mets and Marlins. Hey, Marlins, you know how to score some runs. Uh, breaking our hearts again here on, on Thursday. Um, scoring more runs than we've seen them score in like forever, basically. And on top of that, again, with a ninth inning comeback. Um, just a, a rough one. Again, thankfully, the rest of Thursday night were better to salvage some of that. But that was pretty brutal here. Uh, way for the Marlins to beat the Phillies. Uh in this one, it's projected to be David Peterson and Edward Cabrera. We don't have a line on that as the matchup is not confirmed. So there's no play I can make yet. Model says it should be Mets minus 161 with a total of 7.5. Uh, Peterson, a pretty solid pitcher, 332 ERA. And you don't like metrics say that spot on. His issue is, is length, uh, but definitely an above average pitcher. Cabrera, also an above average pitcher, a 239 ERA. That's not sustainable. Underline metrics say closer to four, but obviously a guy who can strike a lot of guys out and also a guy that might have some length issues. So uh, two solid starting pitchers, a, a lefty for the Mets. The Marlins project better against lefties because they're very right-handed heavy. Um, Mets facing a righty is, is their stronger suit. Um, so both offenses are getting the pitcher they'd rather face with regards to handedness. Um, again, Mets should be favored in this one on the road. The question is by how much. We'll see what the price is. Big model says Mets minus 161, total is 7.5. Uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow when a line comes out. We can get you a play later on in the day. Maybe by the time you watch this, maybe I've already got a play out. Maybe not. Same story in Philly, 7.05 Eastern. Start time, Nats at the Phillies. No line out yet. It's projected to be Patrick Corbin and Noah Syndergaard. Corbin, I keep telling you, not as bad as that ERA. He's looked competent at times here as of late. Not good by any stretch of the imagination, but the model has them as just barely below average. And that's what the underlying metrics would say too. Um, if you look at the expected ERA, uh, FIP, XFIP, Sierra, all those things. It's not terrible. It's not like that ERA. That ERA is obviously garbage. It's win-loss record, obviously garbage. But those aren't really predictive. So Corbin, again, I'm down on, obviously. How could you not be? But I don't think I'm as down as most people are. The model's been saying, like, again, not too terrible. Uh, Syndergaard, 407 ERA, underline metrics say that spot on. At this point, his career just an average pitcher and one who's, again, questionable on how much length he's going to give you at this point. Uh, Philly's bullpen is better, but the Nats relievers aren't bad. Um, I've been saying that about the Nats. That's been their, that's been the, the saving grace for the Nats. And when we've backed them or when I've been scared to fade them too much in the last couple of weeks, that's what I've been talking about. The relievers are actually below average, but not by a lot. Not like the Cubs are. Uh, they're just, they're just not great, but I mean, they, they got some decent arms in there. Um, their bats has been what doesn't rate well, but they've scored so much lately. I said on here earlier in the week, I was like, I think it was, I don't know, Monday show. Maybe I was like, look, the Nats aren't going to keep scoring all these runs like this. You're crazy if you think they're doing, they keep doing it. I'm like, I, don't know, man. I mean, I, I'm going with <laughs> probabilities here. They shouldn't, they still aren't a good offense, but I mean, they keep scoring. So I, I'm not a believer in the hot streak thing. Again, what I was talking about momentum's only as good as the next day starting pitcher. Um, can they hit Noah Syndergaard? Absolutely. It's not like they're going up against, you know, it's not like the Phillies are throwing Nola or, or, or Wheeler, you know, so they can absolutely get some runs here. 
I am a believer also, and they've got a lot of young players and the uncertainty around the young players is a lot higher. We do know how minor league data translates fairly well, but minor leagues get weird and guys work on different things. And sometimes the numbers are a little misleading. There's just a lot happening there. There's just a lot more uncertainty. A lot of young guys have been playing well. The model's still like, it's a little bit of a mirage, but the more they keep doing it, the more you kind of take notice. So I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of purposely treading the middle here. I, I think you're, my, my, what I would tell you is don't go, and again, you can do whatever you want. This is my, my two cents, right, for your life. My two cents is don't go all in on this Nats team as they're really good offensively, but don't also go all in on it's complete mirage and they won't do anything at this point. We've seen it enough this week that I'm kind of, I'm skeptical, but I'm not going, after after today's, you know, Thursday here's performance, I, you just, you, you have to at least, it has to at least make your radar. And that's kind of where I'm on this Nats team. I, I don't really want to go. Their offense is garbage, but also I, I, don't, I don't want to overreact either. And so I think a middle of the road approach makes sense when viewing the Nationals offense. Uh, weather-wise for this one, it'll be around mid 70s to start around 70 degrees to close. So nice weather, wind blowing out or across, hard to tell at this point. Uh, could be a mixture of both uh, the five to 10 mile an hour range, a little bit of a boost to the bats there. Not quite as much as it would be in Wrigley, of course, at that same uh, area model says Phillies minus 221. So the thing to note there, the model is higher than most on Corbin and still says the, the number should start with a two. The way the Nats been playing, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. Uh, I, I, I'm trying to communicate uncertainty. That's what I do as a statistician is I communicate uncertainty. And I think right now, I think to say there's a little bit of uncertainty with the Nationals, I don't think that's... A, a crazy thought. I will say it is interesting to me that again, the models I think higher than most on Corbin and still says minus two twenty one. So I, I don't know what to make of that other than the model still likes the Phillies a lot in this spot. So, I mean, if the price is right, I'm going to play the Phillies. And I want to make sure that this not because I'm all in on the Nats are for sure going to be terribly offensively in their offense is garbage. I would go heavier on the Phillies. If the price is right, it's all about the price. So I'm getting a good price. I'm comfortable laying it with the Phillies. Uh, if not, I'm comfortable taking a flyer on the Nats if the odds are right. Again, model saying 221. If I'm getting a price in the mid 200s on the Nats, sure, give me a flyer on them and see what happens. You know, if I can lay minus 170 with the Phillies, absolutely that's an A grade. Just depends on what the price is. We'll see what happens. Obviously, if one of these pictures is changed, then that completely changes the whole thing too. And I'll come up with a new number uh, whenever that happens. Models of total should be 8.4. So I'm expecting eight and a half. Uh, anything else I think could provide a little bit of value. One last game here that we don't have a number on just yet. Rays at the Yankees. Uh, nice night in New York, mid 70s to start, low 70s to close. Winds blowing in at around five miles an hour. Uh, two solid pitchers here, Drew Rasmussen and Frankie Montas, is what's being projected. Both of them around 90 grades in the model. 100 is average, and the lower the better. Uh, Rasmussen, 270 ERA. Underline metrics say it should be in the low threes. Montas, a 379 ERA. Underline metrics say it should be in the mid threes as well. So again, two good, good pitchers here. Um, two above average offenses, the Rays relievers grayed out better than the Yankees relievers at this point. Uh, model says it should be Yankees minus one Oh five. I mean, a, a huge series here. Obviously I don't think I need to tell you all that a huge series. Here, if the, if the Rays go in and sweep all of a sudden, the division really is in question. Um, if the Yankees sweep the Rays, then uh, you know, they're, they're, you know, going to say it's, it's over the race is over. Right. So uh, obviously it's not that simple, but uh, it, it's not too far from the truth. Right. Uh, so huge series here again, model says Yankees minus one Oh five and a total of 7.6. So again, anything other than a total of seven and a half might offer some value. And basically says a coin toss game that the Rays might be the better team here with Rasmussen. Again, the starting pitcher matchups about a wash uh, right now, believe it or not, the Rays offense grades out better. You can't just look at the home run numbers. The parks are different. Again, I talked about this with Jake. Uh, the Yankees park isn't exactly hitter friendly, but the trap is one of the worst hitter ballparks in the country. So um, you can't just look at things like slugging and home runs. It's like the Rays are going to rate bad because of that park. When you park neutralize it, uh, the Rays offense rates out better and the relievers grade out better. So I think the Rays are the better team at this point. Um a fully healthy, functional Yankees team, different story, but the Yankees aren't fully healthy right now. Uh, Rays also might get back Wander Franco. That affects things too. So if that happens, uh, he's worth at least another percent or two. 
uh, to the raise. So something to keep an eye on there. If he's coming back again, that would jump my number up by the raise by another percent or two. But kind of a coin toss game. We'll see what sort of value is offered on that one. It should be a good one to watch. One more game in the 7 o'clock Eastern time slot. Red Sox at the Orioles. Nice night in Baltimore. Upper 70s to start, lower 70s to close. One's blowing across in the 5 to 10 mile an hour range. Brian Bello versus Austin Voth. I've told you all before, I really like Bello. I want to get everything. I, I want to back Bello as much as we can until people realize he's good. I don't think they do. I think this number to me says people think that Voth is better than Bello. And I don't know how you get there. Uh... I understand that Bellow has a 591 ERA, but I can guarantee you that people making the lines. I, I talk about ERA because it, it, it I talk about ERA because it, it does tell us what did happen. And it tells you just so we can kind of normalize things. And it's something that we all understand. And outside of that, nobody uses ERA that's actually doing this for a living. I, ERA is not a component whatsoever in my model. Um <laughs> So if you're looking at the ERA, you're like, oh, Bellow's terrible. But like, again, nobody influencing the line cares. <laughs> His underlying metrics are better than Voth's uh, by about a half run. And Voth's ERA isn't even that good anyway. Uh, Bellow's an above average pitcher, obviously in a young guy who has potential. I, and I like Voth. I, I think Voth's a solid, like, we found this guy off the streets kind of thing. Because Voth's been kind of a journeyman around from different teams, right? Voth's a solid guy to have brought in as a swing man, start some games, can give you some link, can be a, a long reliever, like solid pitcher, like a, not bad, you know, a, a cheap fine. And that's what the Orioles need right now. It's great signing for the Orioles for very, very little money, right? But Brian Bell is a better pitcher. The Red Sox offense is better than the Orioles offense. Uh, relievers, Orioles get the edge. That's really the only place they got, got an edge here. And, and, and I – just am not going to buy into this narrative that the Red Sox could win outside of the division, but not in. There's just no statistical justification for that. And that doesn't mean the Orioles will sweep this series, right? The baseball's random anyway. And the model says this is kind of a coin toss type game. So like if the Orioles win this game, I'm not going to be like, I can't believe it. I'm going to be like, yeah, 50, 50 chances, right? Model says 52% for Boston. So if Baltimore wins, I'll be like, yeah, it's a 48% chance, like 48% chance things happen all the, like literally all the time, right? Like, uh, so I don't want, I don't want to be misheard there. It's just that I think there's a lot of value here because the Red Sox, if there's this narrative about the division or, or whatever, and the Orioles have been playing better against the division, like I, I just, I don't think that's really predictive. I think, the totality of data is predictive and we have a pretty good handle on statistics and how things interact. And uh, this Orioles team is good and the model's been backing them a lot lately and the model is giving them boosts for how well they're playing. But to some extent, this Red Sox team is still also good and having a starting pitcher edge matters in this game. And I think they should be favored. So I'm on the Red Sox with plus 120 with an A grade play. Uh, I just, I, I think the Red Sox are 50, 50 or maybe even better to win this game. So plus 120 is a fantastic play. You can play run line if you want. I'm not a big fan of run line in this situation. Total's a little bit higher. Um, the odd, Because of the road team, it's more likely to hit, but the odds are really high. So I just, I don't think it's worth it. Um, it's similar to the Twins-Yankees game on Thursday night where I had the A-grade play on the Twins and I said I was really debating and I took the run line. And I took the run line there because I was just afraid of the Yankees winning in, in, you know, in the bottom of the ninth. And that almost happened. Um, but, you know, yeah, that was really a coin toss. And this is a similar thing, except this one I lean just a little bit more to money line because the price is just so high. Uh, plus 120, again, I think for a team that should be, I think, slight favorites is a tremendous amount of value. Agri play for me on the Red Sox. Total on this one's eight and a half. Model says 8.6. So spot on total according to the model. 805 Eastern first pitch, Blue Jays at the Rangers. Ross Stripling versus Dane Dunning. Stripling, 303 ERA on the season. Underline metrics say that's pretty accurate. Dunning, 437 ERA. Underline metrics say also pretty accurate. Stripling's a better pitcher. Uh, not really much else to say than that. Uh, relievers, Rangers relievers, I feel like always let us down. Blue Jays relievers, up and down, but better than the Rangers relievers. Offensively, Blue Jays also better. Blue Jays should be favored. They're a good team. It's like we talked about with the Blue Jays all the time. I I, I feel like, it, and I could maybe try to quantify this a little better. It doesn't help anybody, so I haven't done it yet. But to wrap your brain around this Blue Jay situation, why I constantly fade them, A, it's been profitable. <laughs> why has it been profitable? Well, because they're being priced like they are the second best team in baseball and they're like the sixth best team in baseball, something like that. And then the model's like, you're, they're good. They're top 10. 
but they're being priced like they're the second best team. And, and, and there are some, some website, I think Fangraphs probably, I think for the most part, I kind of agrees with that and says they're like the second best team in baseball. And like my numbers don't show that. And my numbers have led us to profitability on this because by fading them when they've been overpriced, it's been insanely profitable. We haven't won all the plays, obviously, but we've won so many of them at plus odds um, that it's helped and or switching to some of the run lines has helped too. Uh, I think last Sunday with the, with the pirates on that early game on Peacock, right? Um, it, the blue Jays just always see minus odds that are crazy uh, or run line odds that, that aren't giving enough value. And, and they win a handful of games by one run. So just back in the blue Jays hadn't been really profitable. I think it's the same thing here. They're the better team. Absolutely. Y'all know how I feel about the blue Jays model says it should be blue Jays minus minus one twenty three. being a big road favorite means you have to be a lot better than the other team. And this Rangers team is not good, but they're very like, meh competent uh we saw it against the astros you know they pulled off uh the upset victory on it was tuesday and then on wednesday uh they lost in a walk-off and and covered the run line with a rat which was like around even money you know so i mean the rangers are, are they're okay i mean they're not good but they're very okay and I just think being favored blue Jays are i've seen like minus 150s minus 160 like to be a minus 160 road favorite you got to be like a lot better than the other team. And I just don't think that's accurate here. Uh, model says 123. I'll take the Rangers at plus 141. It's a B grade pick. You could play the run line as well. This has been the type of play that run line has been better. I'm just going to go money line on this one. And the reason why is because stripling is a guy that I, I, I could be completely off base on this. That's why I said, hear what I'm saying and agree or disagree. That's fine. I'm not going to take offense. That's I, I want you to be happy with how you're playing your, your, your money. M- my strongest feeling is don't back the Blue Jays. They're overpriced. If you pass, pass. But I, I think if you're going to play this game, I, I just I think the Rangers, or you have to look into some weird exotic thing that I'm not considering at this point. And sure, fine. But I'm, just, I'm just talking about money line, run line. Uh, it's been a type of play that run line's been better, but the odds are just too steep. The Blue Jays being the, run, the, the road team, if it does go to extras, the Blue Jays offense could easily, with those Rangers relievers, could easily put up like three runs in the top of the 10th. And then now it's like, oh gosh, the Rangers got to score two just to cover the stupid run line at minus odds. Stripling's a pitcher that my perception of him is that when he's on, he's dominant. And when he's not, he can really struggle. And so it's kind of one of those, like, I feel more likely that the Blue Jays if I was going to play the Blue Jays, it would for sure be on the run line. And I feel like it's more likely the Blue Jays run away with it or like accidentally get upset. So I could be completely wrong on that take. But that's why I'm going money line. I think there's value on the money line or run line. It's just kind of a personal preference thing. Uh, model says total of 8.1. Actual total is eight. Another game I didn't. Part of the reason why I talked about not liking the total markets as much. The totals just got really good all of a sudden. Uh, eight in Eastern first pitch. Reds at the Brewers. Brewers coming off a huge sweep of the Giants. Again, needed both of those wins to have hope of staying in the wild card race. Still a long road ahead for them, but you know, losing both of those would have been not exactly, but metaphorically the dagger. Getting the Reds this weekend, three more wins you got to have. I mean, I don't really think there's any other way to say it than that. Um, I'm projecting the roof to be open on this one. It should be a nice night. No chance of rain mid seventies to start around 70 degrees to close. Um, the issue for the brewers is they used up like all their relievers in game two with Peralta only going a couple of innings before exiting. Uh, and then now they go to Jason Alexander who um, leaves a lot to be desired for from the starting pitching position. That's the kindest way I can say it. Model gives him a 112 rating. He has a 503 year on the season. He's not going to give you a lot of length and the underlying metrics say that that's pretty much who he is. So the Brewers in this situation, now the Reds offense isn't that good. Um, again, like I talked about trade of the way, most of their bats fought out a couple, you know, both their catchers hurt, right? So, that's the Brewers hope. But I mean, what they really wanted in this game was Alexander go through the lineup twice and start it over to their bullpen. But again, their bullpen got used up a bunch, a little bit in the double hitter one innings worth of Devin Williams. But I mean, they, their best pitcher got used and then all the guys pitching in that second game and it was a tight game. So it wasn't like they could just throw the garbage guys. Um, I, 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 the model doesn't take into account exactly what happened the day before with regards to relievers because nine times out of 10, it's rounding error. Maybe probably more than that, probably 19 out of 20 or, or 39 out of four. It's rounding error. 
the exception is when you have a game like that, or we had the Orioles earlier in the week when it's like you used up all your good relievers. And it's like, now that one actually playing the next day matters a little bit, not a lot, but a, a percent or two, a percent or two, right? Don't overreact, but it, but it matters, especially with Jason Alexander pitching. If this was Corbin Burns today, I'd be like, eh, like he could go eight innings, especially against the Reds. He could go nine against the Reds. Jason Alexander, I'm a little bit nervous about the Brewers here. I think it's Reds or pass given the situation, given that Nick Lodolo, again, a guy I talked about lately backing him a lot, has looked really good. ERA now below four underlying metrics say he's actually been better than his ERA, which makes sense pitching in a hitter-friendly ballpark that the underlying metrics would say he's better than his ERA, and his ERA is pretty good. So, I mean, I like backing Lodolo. I mean, a huge starting pitcher edge for the Reds and the Difference between the Reds relievers and Brewers relievers, I think it's a lot closer after what happened on Thursday. Now, I will note that Diaz threw a lot of pitches, um, and he's the Reds' best reliever. So, uh, threw a lot of pitches day before. So, that's the, the the caveat to the, there still is a gap, but I think it's just still a lot smaller. The Brewers relievers need a day off, and I don't think they're going to get that with Jason Alexander. That's the fear is that, again, if they had even Woodruff pitching today, it would be a different story. Model says Brewers minus 134. So even at the prices of Brewers minus 144, minus 150, again, too steep. And again, the model's not taking into account. I think really the model's off by about a percent based off of the reliever situation, maybe even two percentage points. To me, it's Reds or pass. I'm going to take the Reds on the run line in this one. Total of eight, uh, or the model says total of eight. Actual total is eight and a half. So the model would go under. Again, the model doesn't know about the reliever situation, which again, usually doesn't matter. It's why I haven't coded it in because it's not worth the time and the effort to pull all that in and figure all the specifics of that out. So I don't think I would go under, even though the model says eight and the actual is eight and a half. I think eight and a half is probably a good total, but I think run line is probably the way to go here. Totals under nine in a header friendly ballpark. I think it should be a tight game. I think the Reds can score some, but I don't have faith in the Reds really shutting the Brewers out. I expect this game to be three to three late, four to four late. And then at that point, I like having the run line with the road team as the plus one and a half makes a whole lot more sense. Um, that way, again, if the Brewers win in a walk-off fashion, assuming it's not a you know multi-run home run on a tie game or whatever, right? We got the win. So it's steep odds, but I think the Reds are worth a look here. If you want to split, take a chance on the money line, I think that's not a bad idea either. I just think it's a tight game, and at the end of the day, I still can't trust the Reds to win, but I do think they can keep it close. So I'm going to lay the minus 160 and take the Reds on the run line with a B-grade pick. 18 Eastern, first pitch, Guardians at the Twins. Twins finally getting some redemption for us here. And we split with the, the Twins here uh, in this series, so, so not, not bad. The model tends to like the Twins a lot. Um, so we, you know, we play them a lot and hold our breath sometimes, but get it done here, uh, closing out the series at Yankee Stadium with a win. It'll be a chilly one in Minnesota here on this Friday night. Low 60s for the entirety of this game. Slight chance of rain to keep an eye on. Winds will be blowing out or across in the 5 to 10 mile an hour range. So again, something to check back on uh, exactly where that wind's blowing. Could give the bats a little bit of a boost to offset the cold temperatures. Otherwise, with those colder temperatures, the ball won't really fly in that ballpark if the wind is blowing across. Under is a strong look, in my opinion, in this one. The Twins' offense, as we talked a lot about, can be really hit or miss. Uh, total is eight. The model says 7.7, so I don't know what the total will be by the time you watch this. My, I would set it at 7.5 because the model is saying there's a chance that this wind still blows out and still can't get anywhere near eight. The only way I'd be a little bit concerned about this if the wind shifts to truly out, but even in that case, it's so cold, I still think that eight's a solid total. So if it was me... I'm locking in eight and saying if the wind helps us, if the wind is neutral across, the total should for sure be 7.5. If the wind is still blowing out, we still have a decent chance at eight with the Twins offense being so erratic. The Twins relievers post-trade deadline above average. Guardians relievers, fantastic. And again, both offenses really can disappear. Twins offense can, but the Guardians offense is worse and also very erratic. So I think under makes a lot of sense in this one. With regards to the side, I'll grab the Guardians even money with the C grade pick. I think it's priced really well. Model says Twins minus 103. So right now there's really no edge. But this is one like I talked about at the beginning of the show. The way this number moves matters a lot. If you can get Guardians plus 105, I'm a little more interested. If the Guardians are plus 110, I'm getting really excited about this. There's a pretty solid mathematical edge there. On the Twins, again, they should be slight favorites. Twins even money, I think, is a solid look. Twins plus 105 is a really good look. It's just can you get plus odds on either team or at least even money on the Twins? Otherwise... 
it's probably priced pretty well, and I think under is a better look than either side. Cal Quantrill and Dylan Bundy, two pitchers, nothing special, both right below average. Quantrill's ERA is better, but the underlying metrics say it's a, a little bit of smoke and mirrors. I'm going to take the Guardians as my lean, and here's why. I trust Quantrill more than I trust Bundy. Should I? I don't know. I mean, the model says one's barely better than the other. Quantrill's better ERA. I guess I don't really think that means anything, but, you know, he's gotten better results. I guess that's what, I mean, that's what it means. It's gotten better results. Can he keep doing that? I mean, probably not like with any <laughs> statistical certainty, but he's gotten better results. And so I trust him a little bit more. I just don't trust Ellen Bundy. Uh, again, that's why I lean guardians, but again, I don't think it's a great price to really be that invested in. Like some of my main look on this one would actually be the under. 810 Eastern start time angels at the Astros. Michael Lorenzen versus Lance McCullers Jr. Lorenzen's fairly average. Uh, McCullers in his four starts made it a little over five on average. 208 ERA, but the underlying metrics say he's got not a some jams. We talked about McCullers before. He can do that. He gets a lot of ground balls. He does tend to bear down. The counter to that is the more times he lets guys on, the more likely you are just one pitch away from a three-run homer and things going sideways. And that's where the underlying metrics are telling us that there's a little bit of concern with McCullers. Um, obviously, there was hope to be better than this, but really he's trending towards more of an average pitcher. Obviously, coming back from an injury, he's got the potential to be much better as an Astros fan. Personally, uh, I, I, I'm optimistic for the long-term effect for him, but right now he's, again, a little above average, but he, he, he's, he's, he makes you nervous watching him. And so my thought on this game is it's angels or pass because at least uh, th there's a chance these two starting pitchers are about the same. And even if McCullers is better or the model thinks he is better, I don't think he's better by enough to make the prices on the Astros justified. I mean, minus 220 right now is way too high. Model says minus 194. If I could get a number that starts with a one with the Astros, let's talk. And, and, and maybe that's where it'll be, right? So by the time you watch this, maybe it is. And so that's what I'll talk about. The price really matters. If the number starts with a one with the Astros, all right, let's go. 220 or higher, God forbid. I mean, it's just way too high. It's angels or pass with the way it's priced right now. I'm going to grab the angels on the run line. It's, our, it's close to even money. Again, uh, love the road line with the road team here uh, as your uh, chances of covering it are greater. Um given that it's more likely that if the home team wins late, they, they win by one. So uh, I'm surprised that we're around even money, but I'm also surprised that you can get the Angels for plus 200 right now. So uh, either way, if you want to take a flyer on the Angels to win, I don't think that's a crazy look. It's got great uh, appeal with the odds, but again, I'm going to stick with the run line. I think they can keep it close. Um, B grade pick for me, not enough to get overly excited about. If this was even money, that would be an A grade, maybe even minus 105. Would be an A grade, but at minus 115, it's worth a look. Uh, but it's not my heaviest play of the night. Total of 8.5. Model says 8.4. 8 Eastern Start Time Tigers at the Royals. Mid 80s to start in Kansas City, mid 70s to close. One's going to be blowing kind of out, kind of across in the 5 to 10 mile an hour range. So another one that might get a little bit of a boost with the wind and might not. Based off of that, the model says the total should be 8.1. The actual total is 8.5. I'm a little surprised it's 8.5 with the Tigers' offensive struggles, but the Royals have been more of an over team. Kaufman is an over park or a, a, not over, a hitter's park. Uh, and both starting pitchers being a little bit below average is probably why. So I, I think I might still lean under 8.5, but it's not quite as exciting maybe as I first thought. I feel like anytime you see the Tigers – and a number that high, and it's not 100 degrees outside like it was in Anaheim when they were playing. You're like, ah, I just got to play the other, right? And, and I probably would, but again, both pitchers below average, 80 degree, eight, mid 80s to start, hitter friendly ballpark. Uh, I temper my my under bet there. Your model still says under. Uh, it's not my favorite total play of the day, but but one I might look at. Uh, again, a pair of lefties here that are both right below average. Joey Wentz, uh, only seven innings so far this year but the well the era is bad the underlying metrics in those seven innings are pretty solid projects to be again a little below average uh, daniel lynch thrown over 100 innings 482 era underlying metrics say mid fours for him nothing to write home about really with either one of these guys at this point uh Wentz projecting well based on or projecting not well projecting average based on uh minor league data so again not a guy who's going to come up and dominate but a guy who 
has a chance to at least hold his own. And, and Lynch kind of the same thing can hold his own. And especially against the Tigers offense should be able to hold his own. Um, Tigers relievers, of course, better than the Royals. Royals offense, of course, better than the Tigers. All that said, the model says this should be a coin toss ish game, lean Royals, but not by that much. Model says Royals minus 107. I'll go with the Tigers at plus 118 with a B grade. Just not a horrible odds for the run line in this one. I'll just go with a short uh, money line play. B grade pick, enough to be enough to get your attention on the Tigers. But again, not not a like, oh my gosh, this value, you can't pass it up. I think the Tigers are worth a look here. Uh, again, uh, worth kind of sort of the Cardinals, you know, probably worth a little bit to at least add your portfolio, diversify, cover yourself from the extremes of what happens if you just bet two or three games a night. Uh, but at plus 118, not enough to get super excited about. Low plus 120s, plus 125. Now you're talking about a lot of value and definitely worth a stronger look on the Tigers, in my opinion, uh, than I am giving it right now at plus 118. 840 Eastern start time. Diamondbacks at the Rockies in Denver. It'll be about 70 degrees to start, mid-60s to close. Winds blowing in or across around 10 miles an hour. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but here's your under of the day, folks. Uh, total right now is 11, and I hate to break it to the overbetters out there. I know there's a lot of you, but 11 in cores makes sense with the wind not blowing in and it not being in the upper 60s for the majority of the game. But with this weather, 11 is just way too many. Herman Marquez has been pretty solid the back half of the year. Um Zach Davies has been pretty respectable all season, save for a few starts that kind of have certain explanations as to why maybe he didn't do good. I mean, not that either of these pitchers is good, but both these pitchers are decent enough. Um, both these offenses can struggle at times. I know the Dunbacks offense has been mostly pretty good as of late. Uh, but again, the way Marquez has pitched, he's a type of guy who can kind of shut them down, I think. Um, obviously, the relievers are a problem here. Coors Field can have a lot of runs, but 11 is a big number. Uh, total, according to the model, is 9.7. So I'd be hanging either 9.5 or 10. I'd probably hang 10 if it was me. Um, and, and, and know that a lot of people are going to go over, but say that's probably okay because 10 and 9, 10 is your most likely outcome. And then 9 is your next most likely outcome, with 11 being the third most likely outcome. And at 11, if we go under, we still push at that. So. I like the under in this one. And with regards to the side, uh, the model says it should be Rockies minus 106. So I'm going to grab the Rockies at minus 108 with the B grid play. The model I, I just doesn't like the Rockies. Uh, we've talked about that a lot this year. And so anytime it's basically saying it's maybe a tiny bit of value or close to value on the Rockies, I, I think it's worth a play. That was the case on Wednesday. It was a very similar situation where it was just a, it was right around the number. And I said, hey, that's good enough for me. Same thing here. It's good enough for me. I, I don't really know why the model has such a Rockies bias, but it does. It, it's obviously a weird translation of their park. It didn't happen last year. Every year, I guess there's maybe one team that last year was the guardians. Um, this year it's the Rockies. I don't know. Um, but it's good enough for me. I, 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 I'm, I'm reading how the model is reading the Rockies. I'm, I'm, I'm looking back at you looking back at me kind of thing. I know what the, how the model feels about the Rockies. So given that the model says minus 106, I think minus 108 is worth a look to be great play for me on them. I think they can get it done. Uh, and like I said, I, I think not that it's a low scoring game, but I think 11 is too many runs for this one. And one of the unders that I'd be looking at if you're a totals better. 940 Eastern, a first pitch, Dodgers at the Padres. Uh, Chance of rain in San Diego. So there's that. Uh, very confusing, but that's what the, the weather stuff says. So maybe some rain in San Diego, which I feel like never happens, but something to keep an eye on there. Otherwise, still fairly warm uh, for a night game. Low 80s to start, upper 70s to close. Winds will be blowing out uh, 10 to 15 miles an hour. I don't know how rain's going to potentially affect this. The wind will be dying down a little bit as the night goes along. Uh, so if it rains and it's delayed later into the night, that affects things a little bit. San Diego is also a place where like their park isn't built to handle rain because it's Southern California. And so I, I know that when we've seen sometimes these type of situations where it's been like a quarter of an inch of rain, where most fields will just be like, throw the tarp on it, will be fine. It's built to drain really well. In San Diego, it's been like 
a tenth of an inch of rain, we're just going to push postpone it. So that might happen too with just a little bit of rain. I'm not, I don't know. Um, so the, the weather's a little bit wonky, but assuming that we do play this game and the wind is still blowing out like this and it does stay around 80 degrees, the model likes the over here uh, would be your the, its favorite over of the day. It says it should be nine. The actual total is eight. I'm not a fan of Clevenger. Uh, I, May's good, but May can get hit around. Uh, we saw it with his, with his last outing uh, and, and or can lead to a short start. And not that the Dodgers bullpen's bad. It's not. But as I was talking about with these type of things, the more relievers you enter into the game, the more likely it is that one of them gives up a crooked number. Um, both these offenses are really good. Uh, Padres better against the righty Dodgers better against the righty. So, I mean, it sets up to be more of a higher scoring game, especially if the weather is like it is. So something to keep an eye on there, check back with the weather as it gets closer, but eight, I think is way too low. Uh, assuming that nothing changes with the weather again, it may get rained out if it, if it, if it doesn't, um, model scissors value on the Padres. Sure. I don't know. I'll, I'll take a fly on the Padres at plus plus one forty five. I, I don't, I don't know. Dodgers are always overpriced. It seems like uh, model says Dodgers minus one forty. So laying one fifty five, one sixty with the Dodgers just seems too high. Um, if I was gonna play the Dodgers, I'd probably play it on the run line, especially expecting a higher scoring game. But I mean, we've seen the Dodgers win a handful of one run games over the last month, and so it goes back to what I said previously. I remember talking about the Dodgers and their crazy work run line record where they just won all the games are winning by more than one. And I was like, that's not really sustainable. It's going to f- come back to earth and sure if it has. So uh, I don't think the Dodgers are just like this lock on the run line. If I was going to play them, that's the way I'd look just because 160 against a decent team on the road is, is too much. But I mean, this Padres team just doesn't inspire confidence. So model says it should be plus 140. So plus 145 offers us some value. So I'll take a stab with the, with the Padres, but I just don't want to be too invested in this game because we've seen these types of situations where the Dodgers sometimes win like eight to nothing. So uh, I think the Dodgers are overpriced. I'll play the Padres. I'll take a chance with the plus odds, but it's not one that I really want to be too invested in. It's more just a stay away type situation, in my opinion, with regards to the side. And like I said, really the thing I'd be looking at would be the over eight. 940 Eastern start time, White Sox at the A's. Uh, currently, as I'm recording this, White Sox are up 14 to nothing. You got two touchdowns here uh, on opening out of the NFL against, I guess that's the, uh, the Bears got two touchdowns against the, uh, I guess the ghost of the Raiders, the nearby 49ers. I don't know. Um, I see the same thing happening here tonight. I'm all over the White Sox. Uh, Giolito's a pitcher I've been talking about. Not as bad as the underlying metrics. Uh, rates out pretty average. Not great. Not what we thought he could be. Not what he used to be, et cetera. But a guy who's decent, and I really am down on Caprillion. So massive starting pitcher edge to the White Sox. And as we're always talking about, you always look at the, look at the opponent and – it kind of works both ways here. The White Sox should have a lot of success pitching. Obviously, C's having success. We kind of saw that coming. A guy like Giolito, whose ERA is inflated and the underlying metrics aren't bad, you say, hey, this is a perfect opportunity for you to go out and lower your ERA in a situation in a pitcher's ballpark against a team that can't really hit that well and show us that you aren't that bad. Um, and it works both ways the other way. The guy who's overperforming is like, well, he should still continue to overperform against the A's, right? Not, that they're, not to make them the butt of all the jokes, but I mean – not a good baseball team. White Sox playing really well lately. Jake and I talked about this. Uh, it's been well documented that without Larusa they played better. I, I I I like the starting pitching edge the White Sox have here. Uh, I like their reliever edge, I like their offense edge. I mean, it's all White Sox here, and I think this number is way too low. You can play it on the run line. Jake played Thursday's game on the run line, and barring the weirdest ending ever, that's going to hit with ease. Uh, I played money line. I'm going to stick to money line. Uh, it's a it's a pitcher friendly ballpark. Model would indicate to go under seven and a half. Um, I'm not sure I would because Caprellian, again, I'm I underline metrics. His ERA should be in, in, in the fives. He was moved momentarily to the bullpen before a couple pitchers got injured. So they don't like him either. And it's a pitcher friendly ballpark with regards to home runs in regards to the fact that pop flies stay and get caught in foul territory. But uh, the White Sox had just hit a ton of doubles off the sky and the runs could come, uh, you know, hard, hard and heavy. So I, that's on the table. And so that would scare me away from the under. That being said, it still is a pitcher friendly ballpark. The total still is seven and a half model still says 7.1. So I'm, I'm holding both thoughts 
in my head at the same time. We as humans are advanced enough beings to do that, right? It, it could get out of hand, but knowing the park and knowing that it, there's a lot of low scoring games in there, it, knowing it might be a lower scoring game, I think minus 152 is a fine price to lay. So I'll lay it with the White Sox on the money line with an A grade play. If you play it in the run line, still an A grade play, though, you're going to get better odds. It's just you got to win by more than one. We talked about this a lot, right? It's, it's risk reward. You're risking a little bit of losing the bet on the run line, but you're risking a little bit more literally with the money on the money line. Worse odds. It's personal preference. I'm going money line here, um, partially because the park. And again, while I think it's very possible the White Sox put up a big number, knowing that this could be a two to one type ball game. I'm comfortable laying a number like this. It's not very large. So that's my take on it. Either way, I think the White Sox are an A great investment, whether it's money line or run line. Again, minus 152 is the number I locked in. Model says it should be 170. It's an A grade play for me. Weather-wise, nothing really to note, just kind of a normal night in Anaheim. All right, should be in Oakland. Closing us out, what should be a fantastic series, Braves at the Mariners. Um, nice weather in Seattle. I'm projecting the roof to be open mid seventies to start mid sixties to close Charlie Morton and Robbie Ray. Not much to say about these guys just quietly going about their business and having solid seasons. Morton was kind of up and down for a while, but as of late has looked, you know, just like his normal, fantastic self Ray started off his up and down shakiness was a whole lot shorter and has been pretty consistently solid for a lot longer of a stretch other than I think the times he's faced the Astros. Both of these offenses grade out pretty good. Both of these relief, sets of relievers face out really well. I think this is a coin toss matchup. If you put this on a neutral field, I don't know which team's better. I know the Braves won the World Series last year, but offensively, when you look at the park neutral numbers, and they're talking about with Tampa, right? You have to do the park neutral stuff because Seattle plays in a pitcher friendly ballpark. I think these offenses are pretty close. The Mariners are right behind the Braves. I think the relievers are actually a little bit better than the Braves at this point. Not by much. These two starting pitchers are both really good. Um, model gives one an 89 grade, one an 88 grade. I mean, they're both good. Uh, you know, neither of them, they're, again, they're not, they're not Bieber, Cease, you know, Garrett Cole, right? But they're, they're in that tier right below that. They're both good pitchers that you'd be happy to have on your team. There's no real lefty righty split at this point to talk about Mariners uh, do face better against the righty. So, I mean, that helps them out a little bit, but I mean, this is a coin toss game in Seattle means Seattle should be like 53%, right? Model says it should be Seattle 55%, 51%, 53%, 55%. Any of those numbers seems perfectly reasonable. Again, I mentioned this before. I'm under no delusion that my model's accurate to the 10th of a percent or even the 1%. Like models just aren't, can't be that accurate, right? Yeah, there's no difference. If my model says 53%, it could easily be 52 or 54. Like there's, I do not have confidence that it's within 1%, right? I have confidence it's within a couple of percentage, but two or three, four, right? Seattle should be favored in this game. Plus 108 makes zero sense to me. doesn't mean they win. There are no locks in gambling, but they should be favored. Plus 108 offers tremendous value. It's an A-grid play for me on the Mariners. Total of seven models is exactly seven. Should be a tight, low scoring game. It should be great baseball. Give me plus odds on the home team that should, again, absolutely be favored. I have no doubt in my mind saying that. Uh, if you're staying up late for a Friday, again, it should be a fantastic one to watch. I don't know what else, is, what else there is to say other than Mar Braves good. Mariners also good at home. I don't know why we're getting plus odds and the Mariners want to take it and love it. Plus one away to an A great play for me on Seattle. And that's all I've got for you on this episode. Got three picks to make on Twitter or the Google sheet. You can check those out. Maybe another A grade play. Maybe not. Who knows what the numbers are, what kind of value we can get. Obviously, may update adding. A lot of these are C grade picks. I'm giving myself room to add it, add some money to if the odds get better come morning time. Uh, I'll update with final probabilities. Uh, it might tweak a little bit based off of what happened tonight uh, here on Thursday night. Uh, update on the totals with the weather, right? That'll be the late morning. Uh, again, maybe by the time you're watching this, uh, maybe not, maybe a little bit later, but I'll update all that and fill in the extra remaining plays. Again, maybe another A play, maybe not, maybe an added unit somewhere. Who knows? We'll see. But right now I've got three A plays for you. I got the Red Sox plus 120 at the Orioles. I've got the White Sox minus 152 at the A's. And if you want to go run line there, I think that's perfectly fine as well. And then I've got the Mariners plus 108 at home against the Braves. 
And that is all I have for you today. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Picks with the Professor. A reminder, check out the Google Sheet for model picks, projections, and results. You can find that link and more at the website, www.pickswiththeprofessor.com. If you haven't done so yet, please click that subscribe button to ensure all the sports betting content we provide on this channel is dropped right into your feed. I'll see you again tomorrow with more MLB betting content. Again, reminder, grab that college football content if you haven't yet. As always, best of luck. And remember, you can eat your betting money, but please... Don't bet you're eating money.